this one now is a prophetic revelation God gave me there are five prophetic seasons that are being opened to the body of Christ right now I want you to write them down five prophetic seasons the Lord revealed to me that is being opened to the body of Christ now and we must understand how to discern in the spirit and how to walk with this this is why this teaching came by the spirit number one the first prophetic season that is opening up to us right now is a season of the harvest please write a season of the harvest there will be such massive salvation of souls according to Matthew chapter 9 from verse 37 38 we are in a season of the harvest then saith he unto his disciples the harvest is truly plenteous but the laborers are few he says next verse 38 now pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that means this harvest that you see all these souls that you see who are careless there is a caretaker the caretaker is the Holy Ghost to see to it that as many of them who come into the saving knowledge of Jesus he's called the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his field so every sinner in the mind of God is a harvest. It's not a seed growing. It's a harvest ready to be sickled into the fold. It is the bankruptcy of laborers. What is the implication of the season of harvest? I don't want to go ahead of myself. We'll leave that for next week. But the season of the harvest demands that there is a kind of training. There is an awakening that God is going to be placing upon men. Are we together? That will cause that through mighty signs and wonders so many will come to Jesus within the time that we have left the first season that is being opened before us now believers body of Christ we must discern is the season of the harvest are you ready for number two the second season the Lord revealed to me is called the season of abundance of grace the season of abundance of grace manifestations of divine abilities and enablements in a capacity that has not been seen you will see men carry weighty graces weighty possibilities ordinary men but empowered in such an unusual way the bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power acts 10 38 and he went about you don't go about the difference between a madman and a destiny changer is what is on you a madman too is going about but he's not doing good he's not healing they that are oppressed of the devil there is a grace and a mantle is called an abundance of grace second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 and God is able to make all grace mm, abound abound means coordinated towards your direction that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work most times when we quote this scripture we only limit it to finance this has nothing to do with money or finance it was referenced while he was teaching on sowing and reaping but this is a very powerful potent spiritual law God is able to make all grace a season of abundance of grace what does that mean unusual manifestations Joel chapter 2 from verse 28 to 32 you know the prophecy the prophecy of Joel it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions 29 it says and also upon the servants and upon my handmaids in those days I will pour out my spirit 30 I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Verse 32, it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord had said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. This is very powerful. Abundance of grace. That means men and women will carry unusual ability of the spirit unusual abilities 
men like Joshua who would speak and literally the sun would stand still hallelujah you will see men you see I was reading the other day about the church in Nigeria again my goodness history and technology did not combine themselves properly to do justice for us to really explore the extent of grace and the hand of God that was upon these patriarchs who have now joined the cloud of witnesses when you study the history of the church in Nigeria some of these are old folks and our fathers who have now transited these men operated in strange dimensions but they did not have the advantage of technology to have a rich capture of their manifestations elemental forces literally bowed to the dominion of the grace of God upon them but you see as great as that is Smith Wigglesworth died living a prophecy that there is still a generation coming that will outdo every manifestation of the hand of God upon their lives I truly believe that this is the generation yes I truly believe that not because we are better than the generations past it has so pleased God by the election of grace and the prophetic timing that a generation will arise, ordinary men, but with such an abundance of grace. Number three, what is the third prophetic season that is being opened to the church? Are you ready? The season of the fulfillment of ancient prophecies. This is what God told me. A season of the fulfillment of ancient prophecies prophecies from scripture and prophecies from modern history there are few of these mighty men we know who died without living a prophecy some of us have not found the prophecies but some of these men under the unction of the spirit especially around their final days on earth they immortalize their impact by living certain prophecies the things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning, so that we through patience and the comfort of Scripture might find hope. Hallelujah. There are great men and women who left very serious prophecies across several denominations. Some of them could not speak English, but they still spoke. They documented their writings. For the generation that is coming some of them this some of these these prophecies were harbingers they were signposts warnings cautions some of them were encouragements some of them they were revelations of prophetic blueprints pitfalls to jump when you got to that level it's important that we obtain grace first from scripture and then the wisdom of the ancient God is empowering those prophetic words for some of them those prophetic words are hundreds of years old but they will still come to pass for instance the prophecy about the revival that is happening across the nations don't you think a group of men were just stared and just had fire like that don't you think the prophecy about Nigeria has been there before some of us were born hallelujah I remember a group of people who a man I, I met one time and they left a prophetic word they were praying there's a song it is raining all around me you know that song now I can hear the latter rain now hold on do you know what brought about that song it was in the place of prayer it was a prophetic word for a generation that's how that song came Give us more rain until we are wet and we are soaked in the latter rain. There are many songs you have been singing. You call them hymns, but they are prophecies. They contain codes within them that will be unlocked in this season. Many of you, one of these nights, you will go to sleep as usual, except that in your sleep, you will wake up and you will not be the same person who went to sleep. And God would say, you have finally found it. That when these fathers were prophesying, they spoke and it concerned you through the loins of time. And it is time for you to walk in partnership with that prophecy. It was true that Emmanuel would come from a virgin. But there was no name Mary that was mentioned. A woman aligned herself with prophecy. If Mary rejected it, the Holy Ghost would have gone to look for another virgin. 
Only God knows how many prophecies are hovering around right now. The prophecy about the restoration of the healing mantle. Kenneth Copeland spoke it. R.W. Shambach spoke it. These are, these are the many that I know. These men spoke it that there will be a prophetic renaissance of the authentic healing ministry in the similitude of the tent meetings that used to happen in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. But all prophecies are fulfilled through the hands of men. So somebody will get up one day and begin to sense in your heart to study the materials of Charles and Francis Hunter. You don't even know what is leading you. You are, you are seeing a grace is lead. You see, let me tell you something about mantles. When, when a mantle is looking for you, your life stops being normal. There is an energy and a hunger that makes you strange, almost like a madman. When others are sleeping, you are awake. You do not know by what impulse you are kept. You try to sleep, sleep will be taken away from you because the destinies connected to your obedience will not allow you sleep. Hallelujah. Only God knows how many prophecies. And you see, no matter how long a prophetic word stays unfulfilled, a time will always come. You would think Jesus will never appear. Even after 400 years from Malachi to Matthew, theologically speaking, there was no mention of God, no nothing. It was supposed to, supposedly a dark age in the history of the church. From Malachi to Matthew, 400 years thereabout. You would think he would not come. Suddenly a madman just shows up from nowhere, filled with the Holy Ghost from his, mo his mother's womb, coming in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Found himself in the wilderness, eating locusts and wild honey. You will say, thank God this madman is in the wilderness. This kind of man should not come into the city. Yet that was the man who was... Look at the way this guy's life was literally sacrificed. He had not a normal life. Simply because he was the one to ordain Jesus. And then one day, do you know that Jesus was not the only one who was born the day he was born? He had birthday mates, yet they were not the Savior. And then this young boy is born, and Mary had no idea. She just knew an angel said, this man, and you know, she just felt one of those prophets. And Jesus grew in wisdom, stature, and favor with God and with men became a mighty man indeed the savior listen ladies and gentlemen please hear me there are many prophecies you see the manifestation of the diverse graces that are in nigeria the manifestation of the graces in africa god in 2005 i had a vision and in that vision i saw young asians Asians, fair skinned Asians, fire came from heaven and rested upon just one of them, and then it started spreading like a candle and it moved until it spread across those people. And the Holy Ghost told me that there will be such a move of the Spirit in Asia. And then, in another vision, the Lord began to speak to me that Africa, that rejected stone, you see that that rejected stone please listen carefully and i have taught on this many many times that rejected stone that africa will herald jesus christ the continents europe has been given their chance to herald jesus america has been given their chance to herald jesus but africa that rejected stone when that prophecy came many of us were not born but the prophecy was still there still hovering around and now one by one there are people being handpicked from the south of nigeria from the north of nigeria you will see one person maybe from borno maiduguri not even having any comeliness yet the prophecy will land on him you will see another yoruba man or woman minding their business the prophecy will land you will see another person whose grandfather supported missionaries and god will say no in this prophetic formation i must honor this family and the grace will land upon them. It will come to the middle belt and hand pick a few people. This is what is happening. And then it is spreading to Africa, my God. Ghana, Kenya, Uganda, 
South Africa, Rwanda, ordinary men. Some of you may not know what is driving you. I am telling you now, there is zeal without knowledge, but there is prophecy seeking fulfillment. When the prophet said, by this time tomorrow, the four lepers were not there to hear it. One morning, they just could not sit down again. They said, why sit we here? The same way you got up and said, why am I prayerless? You do not know that it's a prophecy, that a prophet will rise from the east, a prophet will rise from the west, a prophet will rise from the north. It is that prophetic word that has now created a dissatisfaction within your spirit. I am sure that when the prophet spoke in the loins of time, and prophecy will come to land upon a minister doing sin and raise him up and give him songs, rest upon a Nathaniel Bassi. And you see, you just when you look at men, you just think these people are uniquely distinct by an election of grace, yes. But let me tell you the truth when you align with prophecy, you will find yourself looking like someone in scripture. They have taught you, you have to see a parallel of your life in future in the scripture. There are men and women who you will look at your life and see that this is Esther forming. This is Elijah forming. This is John forming. This is Peter forming. Because mantles never leave the earth. No, it is only human bodies that live. So there are many mantles. No mantle in scripture today is in heaven. No, when mantles come, they do not go back again. Mantles maintain the continuity of God's program. Ah, only God knows who T.L. Osborne's mantle is still looking for. Only God knows who Ket Ketrin Kuhlman's mantle is still looking for. It, no, it does. Listen, listen, listen. Just because the mantle fell on a white man or a white woman, no, it does not mean it must. No, God does not work like that. Charles and Francis Hunter. They have gone to be with the Lord, but only God knows who will carry their mantles. You see, the truth is that you cannot confuse mantles. You can know that this is a, they, they looked at Elijah and they said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elijah. And the mantles are many, oh, don't think there are just a few people, no. There are many, many, many mantles. The mantles that were upon Solomon that granted them access to wealth and riches. I know that one of these days, that mantle will find somebody. I'm telling you, this is not just the issue of financial prosperity. This is commanding dominion over resources for nations. But you see, you have one assignment to prepare yourself like Mary. To say be it unto me according to your word be it unto my destiny according to your word let's finish up so that we can pray my goodness i'm seeing a boiling pot just a pot boiling with water this is what i'm seeing Harato shalika fariata. number three a season of the fulfillment of ancient prophecies let me give you the last two five prophetic seasons that are being opened to the body of Christ. Number one, I said, the season of the harvest. Number two, the season of abundance of grace. Number three, the season of the fulfillment of ancient prophecies. And some of these prophecies are very ancient. Number four, are you ready? The fourth season that is being opened to the body of Christ now is a season of intense spiritual warfare. Intense spiritual warfare. And you take my word for it. Intense spiritual warfare. This is a call for a higher level of spiritual intelligence. This is a call for a higher level of the grace for prayer. Intense spiritual warfare because every time a prophetic vista is open, go and read your Bible. Satan is also interested. Whether it is Jesus, he will kill children for his sake. Whether it is Moses, he will kill other children for his sake. Satan is always interested in the attention of God. Where is God looking at? If God is looking at the north, Satan is interested in the north. 
if God is looking at Nigeria Satan is interested in Nigeria one of the ways you know where the attention of God is is the area of interest as far as Satan's attack is concerned so don't ask why he seems to be zooming his attention on your family he knows that the eyes of Jehovah has looked upon your family but it demands intense spiritual warfare you are a man of God here the days of folding your arms to believe it to be ministry as usual is over you must learn how to master the dynamics of the altar how to command power with God and with men otherwise you will not survive the days that are coming hallelujah spiritual warfare darkness looms across the horizon Hallelujah. Satan is releasing every arsenal, not to glorify him, but the truth is the truth. Releasing every arsenal in whatever fashion. But the Bible says now, thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. But we must be people of spiritual intelligence. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. He says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. The intensity of the warfare in the days of Paul, it was so serious that as prayerful as Paul was, he said, brethren, pray for us. Brethren, not just give to us, pray for us. This is the reason why you see God steering prophetic intercessory ministries. Men and women who may never have the honor of standing on the pulpit to preach. But my goodness, these are people who they, God grants them grace to watch over his program across nations because of the depth of their grace to intercede. Not everybody will hold the mic and preach. Not everybody will go to the nations. The formation of the army, I have taught you, is a tripartite formation. Prophetic intercessors, those that are sent and those that provide supplies. This is the tripartite formation. Intense warfare. This is the time to pray for one another. This is a time to stand anybody you know and you love that God is using. Don't just clap for them. Pray for them. Are we together? Yes. Satan is selecting men in these days that represents nations to bring them down. Instead of fighting 20 million people, he will fight one person who controls the fate and the courage of those 20 million people. The Bible says, strike the shepherd. And the sheep will scatter that means everybody you love you owe it as a responsibility pray for every man of God every psalmist that God will keep them that their quiver will be full of arrows intense warfare I desire to come to you even I Paul once and again but Satan hindered us hindered us and Satan will use anything. This is a prophetic message. Anything. You know that God is raising you to be a sign and a wonder in business. Begin to pray. Don't make the mistake of the rich fool. And say, I have abundance. My soul find rest. It's only when you are alive that your money finds relevance. Make sure you are not careless. Spiritual intelligence. Some of you, this is the season where you surround your life with all kinds of prophetic seeds. This is where you engage with intelligence. The Bible says Job gave, offered sacrifices to garrison the lives of his children. It was only by the permission that was given to Satan. If not, Satan himself testified that he could not touch Job. There are, there are spiritual covenant dynamics that can close certain doors that only God can open. There are some of you, God is giving you intense instructions. For instance, he may say, sow a prophetic seed. You may not know why, but with it, you are using that seed to close a day of adversity that may want to be open. Intense spiritual warfare. The Bible says, speaking about the, the, the end times that God himself had to shorten those days so that the elect themselves do you know what that means 
that God has to shorten the days of persecution and all of that so that the elect themselves will not be victims. That is a call for prayer. Jesus said, watch and pray. That means your defense and your being sustained in the days of adversity will demand intelligence. Watch means use your eyes, use your mind, be as wise as serpents, gentle as dove. Don't just pray. He said, watch and pray. Africa prays, but we don't watch. Watch and pray. Intelligence will be needed in your survival. There were times where Paul wanted to enter a city and he was afraid. And God said, do not be afraid. I have many people in that city. That means influence is a weapon of defense even in this end time. Watch and pray. Understand all the spiritual arsenals. And as God empowers us to dish you those arsenals, don't reject any weapon. It will be needed for your survival. When the weapon of prosperity comes, receive it and add it to your quiver. Prayer, receive it. The word, the prophetic. There are times that when you stand in the battleground, the Lord will say, bring out your arsenal of prosperity. And that's what will open a door for you. There are times he will say, bring out your arsenal of worship and you'll bring it out. Don't just choose one weapon and make the mistake of Samson and say, no, my hair cannot be cut. Be full of them. Happy is a man whose quiver is full of them. Even though he's speaking about children. But when your quiver is full, it grants you grace and stability. You have a variety of spiritual weapons to use. Hallelujah. Yes. Jesus had men. He had the Holy Ghost. He had resources. He had power. He had influence. The only reason why he died was because he gave himself. Please hear me. Africa, believers, do not reject any spiritual arsenal that God is bringing for you now. There are people who will survive literally on the wings of prosperity. There are people who will survive on the wings of relationships. There are people who will survive on the wings of all kinds of things. Yes. There are times where it is somebody holding your hand who will keep you alive in the storms. There are times when it is your intellectual prowess that will keep you. Paul was bound one time and he saw the Sadducees and Pharisees. He knew that these people would destroy him. He intelligently now brought the issue of resurrection from the dead. And there was confusion between two of them because they do not agree on that. And that suspended his judgment. It gave him an edge until he was free. You will, the end times will need the deploying of every spiritual arsenal. Your brain will work. The mantle will work. The angelic will work. The name of Jesus will work. Relationships will work. Your gift will work. Are we together now? Do not reject any spiritual arsenal. Warfare demands that you bring out your best. You see nations fighting wars, and when the wars get intense, they bring out certain fighter jets, certain armory that sometimes have been kept and only tested for decades. They bring it out to show the intensity of the warfare. The seasons that befall us are the seasons that would demand bringing our best spiritual arsenal to the point that God himself stands behind us like a mighty terrible one. Number five, the fifth prophetic season that is before the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in this day and in this season is a season of rewards. This is what God told me, a season of rewards. Let me tell you sincerely, there will be mighty visitations upon people, upon families, upon regions, and God is going to be coming to them to reward them for their contributions towards his program so far. This is what the Lord told me. A season of reward is coming. There are families that generationally participated in kingdom come across many, many, many dimensions. Some of the people to be rewarded have long gone. God will still look for their children and their children's children and reward them. If he visits iniquity to the third and fourth generation, the Old Testament tells us, then he can reward even greater than that. So there are many of you who are going to step into prepared blessings. Blessings you know you do not have a direct hand in, but it was the sacrifice your, when the missionaries came to your village. It was in your great-grandfather's house. He kept them. And before they died, some of them were persecuted, but they left a blessing. They said, you have done this to me. May others do it to your children. All of them died without receiving the promise, but God is not a man that he should lie. That word must still come to pass. 
Do you believe what I'm telling you? This is a season of rewards. There are many of you who are at the gates like Mordecai. You saved the life of Ahasuerus, but they, it was only written, but nobody rewarded you. My Bible says that night could not the king sleep. And the king, Ahasuerus, he called. He said, who is in the chamber? Bring me the chronicles. And when they opened it, they found where Mordecai saved his life, but he was not rewarded. And it was Haman that was used to design the reward of Mordecai. Sometimes the blessing you think will come from one believer uncle may not come from a believer uncle. It may be a non-believer that God will put pressure upon him and say you are an Egyptian but it's time to transfer something. You see, you have heard prophecies about wealth transfer. You've heard prophecies about so many things. Let me tell you those prophecies are not a lie. They are not a license for irresponsibility. You see, many believers have folded their arms and not, they are not diligent and productive and they just leave it all up to God. But do not make a mistake of laughing at or downplaying that prophecy because it is true that there is such a massive manifestation of that transfer, especially for kingdom programs. There are families that God is going to bless them with divine health that they cannot explain. This is a reward. God does not just give things. I have taught you that there are three levels of authority in the kingdom as far as rewarding men. Are concerned the least and the third level of reward is reward and dominion over things remember my teaching that when God rewards men he gives you things that is the least level of authority and reward the second level is reward as authority over nations systems and structures the highest level of reward God can give a man on earth today is to steward his program God can make you captain, not just over his inheritance, but over his program. So God can say the next move of the spirit for 10 years, this is the person I am putting to spearhead that move. Is the highest honor God can ever give any man, aside from salvation. And there are men who are going to be rewarded. You will see that God is going to increase the bishopric of many men. He is going to be collecting the one talent from unfaithful people and adding it to those who have turned five to ten. You will see multiplication of graces upon people. Capacity. When God increases a man, there are three things that happen to that man. Number one is a multiplication of grace and unction. Number two is an enlargement of your spiritual influence. Number three is a committal giving you greater spiritual responsibilities. Hallelujah. So you will see men that started as evangelists. But you will see other dimensions in them because certain bishoprics have been collected from careless people and added to faithful people. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that the bishopric of a man can be taken and that one talent carelessly used can be added to the one who brought ten. Hallelujah. So do not marvel when you see men stepping into accelerated levels of spiritual influence, of power, of grace, of access. This is one of the seasons that is upon us. Hallelujah. They looked at the disciples. They had faithfully followed Jesus. And something came upon them. The Bible says these are they that turn the world upside down. And what I'm telling you is not just happening in Nigeria and Africa alone. This is a global move of the spirit. But we are so privileged as a continent and as a nation for some reason. I think it's just the act of God's grace that the prophetic light for the nation has zoomed upon our nation and upon our continent. And so we are going to experience, it's already happening. Do not miss next week. I will be sharing with you other prophetic instructions. Don't forget our series, Navigating Prophetic Seasons. We looked at, behold, I do a new thing tonight. Helping us understand God's program. Let me do a one minute recap and then we'll find somewhere to begin to pray. That when God wants to begin to introduce a man into prophetic seasons, among the many things that he does is to take you away from over depending and and to take your mind away from your past good past 
bad past, remember ye not the former things. The moment they are former things, they have, they sustain the ability to distract you by bringing fear and complacency or pride and indiscipline. Either ways, we are mandated to forget about them. And then it says, behold, focus, position your spirit, be prepared. It says, I do a new thing. A new thing demanding discernment and flexibility. A new thing demanding strength and courage. A new thing demanding obedience. And I've shared with you now that there are five prophetic seasons. It's like a veil that is being opened over the body of Christ. Number one is the season of the harvest. Number two, the season of abundance of grace. Number three, the season of the fulfillment of ancient prophecies, both scriptural and prophecies as by patriarchs that have now joined the cloud of witnesses. Number four, the season of intense spiritual warfare, a call for higher levels of spiritual intelligence, a call for greater dedication in the place of prayer and spiritual warfare. And number five, is the season of rewards where God is bringing consolation to people we do not love the Lord and we do not serve him listen just because of things I have taught you however in the economy of God he will never allow people to serve him indefinitely without being rewarded Hebrews 11 and verse 6 the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must come believing that he exists he is and that he is a rewarder a rewarder it is a name that he is called God rewards men so sooner or later some of you will receive a knock on your spiritual door like a parcel from DHL, you know how they come to you and they knock your door and say, are you so, 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 and so, is this your address? Someone's address, there is a parcel coming from heaven and with it is written the name of your children, your children's children, and for you, some of those rewards are so powerful, they will grant you rest roundabout. That is why we took out time to pray that God is visiting men. I hope you believe this. When the Lord turned again the cup, of Zion it says we were like them that dream there are people who lament and say we see not our signs God you gave us a sign that when we see we should rejoice that victory is here we are tired of waiting and we've not seen the sign let me encourage someone hold on you are almost there one day to your miracle don't let the devil cheat you you have stood for this long stand until the end are we together now yes haven't done all to stand stand in prayer stand in diligence stand as you are serving the lord for some of you you have felt so embarrassed serving the lord they've called you all kinds of names church this mother mary don't worry the rewarder is coming when he comes he does not reward you in secret go and read your bible the bible says god who sees you in secret will reward you openly openly that someone will lose sleep and God will tell him for this my son give him a car give him a house and a million dollars in his account it does not make sense but it does not matter that is God for you God is beyond the realm of sense he's able to bless people the rewarder I have experienced these kinds of seasons in many levels in my own life to be very honest with you there are seasons where God decides to tell you my son my daughter Thank you for your faithfulness, serving my purposes. I am coming to you as a rewarder. It is a pleasant thing to see the rewarder in action. He can wipe your tears of many years in one day. Do you know, I'm wrapping up, there are many people today who you cannot quantify the sacrifice of their service unto God, their time, their resources, there are times I'm traveling and I just rest my head in the aircraft and I'm saying, my God, if not for the love of God, who is going to do this? Stretch from pillar to post. Can I tell you, maybe there's some preacher following and you are saying, Apostle, I am tired. I've been asking the Lord to bring me a consolation. I give you good news tonight in this series that the God of heaven is also a rewarder and that there is a spiritual parcel right from the throne of his majesty that is coming to you and it will be written with your name unmistakable it will be clear that God has come to visit you and for you 
Genesis 21 and verse 1 where we started off will be your testimony and the Lord visited Joshua Selman as he had said and the Lord did unto Joshua Selman as he has spoken visitation and the doings of God it is your inheritance in Christ your own is a call to be faithful as we explore these seasons my assignment is to guide you but your assignment is to discern and to know what to do after the order of the sons of Issachar. To those who are faithful, remain faithful. To those who are unwavering, it's time to stand your ground because the urgency of the matter, the urgency of prophecy in this season will not demand vacillations and carelessness. To the preacher who is discouraged, stand. To the businessman who is about giving up, stand. To the family person who is thinking is God faithful, stand. Even to the one who has cried many tears in the secret and in the open, stand. The rewarder is coming. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Four years before the manifestation of Jesus, I'm sure Anna the prophetess would have been tired of praying. Till now he's not come. And I can imagine the spirit telling her continue. Imagine the joy on her face the day they brought a baby. She said, finally I've seen the consolation. 64 years of prayer non-stop. How about the man 38 years? Only God knows how many prophets may have come around him to say, don't worry. One day you are going to meet a Messiah and you'll be healed. He would have thought it was a lie. But finally Jesus came. We're going to rise up and pray. Please everybody stand and let's pray for a minute or two.